Our next example, problem number 40. Again, we have our equilibrium, our all forces. Um, in this case, we do not have any vertical rope. We just have two ropes and we have pulleys as well. So what we need to understand is when the rope has tension in it, that tension is uniform throughout the rope. Because in this course of physics, we're not considering ropes that can be stretched, compressed, um, have separate tensions, different tensions in different parts of it. So in our case, we just have two ropes that are attached to our leg in a cast. And the way they are phrasing it, we need to figure out how those two ropes are supporting it so that no force is exerted on the hip joint by the leg plus the cast. In other words, there is no force over here. So force here is zero. And we have, again, 220 newtons. That is the weight of the leg, meaning force of gravity is already calculated for us. How nice. This is 220 newtons. Boom. So just like before, we had two vertical forces, which are this force right here. So if I, if I look at just the ropes, I would say this rope here at unknown angle, this rope here at 40 degrees. Sorry, it's not really 40, but just for the sake of the exercise. So I know that there's also this, and this is new to us. We haven't done that before. Now the misconception here, and if you remember, we encountered that in class. If you draw it incorrectly and say that this is 110 Newtons and then this is something different, then you are going to be in trouble. What we need to realize is if I look at this rope, just a rope, it is, yes, indeed, it is over a pulley. But the idea is this is one consistent object. To this object, we have a 110 Newton weight attached and therefore pulling downward on the rope. The rope, according to Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The tension and the force has to support that weight and therefore the tension and the force is going to be 110 newtons as well. Meaning that this right here is 110 and this right here is 110. So when you're looking at this diagram for the person, this is 110 newtons, not the vertical component of that force. So let me draw this. This is my actual force, and that force is the tension in the rope. And the tension in the rope would be equal to this pool of 110 newtons. That is something new. That is something that you might need to process and understand. And we're going to practice with dynamometers, which are the force sensors. And you will see when you pull on something one way, the pull is consistent throughout. So for now, just realize that if there is tension on the rope, 110 newtons, it is consistent throughout the rope in every which direction. So that gives us 110 newtons in the rope that is making a 40 degree angle with the horizontal where it is attached to the leg. Then I can split that 110 at 40 degrees into two components. And I'm going to call it just like you did before left force. So left Y is going to be 110 sine of 40 degrees. Remember that's where we see. So that's sine. And then LX is going to be 110 cosine of 40 degrees. So now notice that I have this right here is a horizontal component of my one rope. And since there is no other horizontal force than this, they need to balance each other out. So now I have to figure out my force on the right. And that one has actually two components and two variables. I do not know the angle or 
the force itself. So I'm just going to say right x is going to be right, meaning the value of the vector, times cosine of angle alpha. I'm not sure what angle alpha is either. So this is a double whammy. We don't know r, we do not know alpha. And then our y is going to be again r sine alpha. Not much help, is it? However, I know what these numbers are. I can easily count them just using a calculator. And as far as our vectors go, I know that the x component of my rope on the left should be balanced by the x component of my rope on the right. So I can say 110 cosine of 40 should be equal to r cosine of alpha. And I also know that my 110 sine of 40 plus r sine of alpha should be equal to 220 newtons. So this is OX as in horizontal direction, and this is OY. So this is, oops, this is horizontal direction. In this direction, forces are balanced. And in vertical direction, forces are balanced. In horizontal direction, we have only two components. In vertical direction, we have three. We have the weight pulling down with 220 newtons, supported with two forces of the two ropes up. And then those two ro ropes provide that due to the two weights that are attached to them. So there we go. We're going to look at math from here and I'm going to come back after I plug everything in the calculator. All right, so here are the values. I plugged it all into the calculator and that gave me the values of 149 in this direction. This is the y component of my force on the right and 84 newtons, which is the x component of the force on the right. That component x equals to this. So if again, if you did 110 times cosine of 40, that is where 84 came from. And that is the x component of the force on the right because they have to balance each other out. Vertically, what I did, again, remember, we looked at the two forces that pointing that are pointing upwards. Those are the two ropes, 110 sine of 40, which is right here, plus the unknown force in the unknown angle, r sine of alpha. Together, they should support the weight of the leg in the cast, which is 220 newtons added together. This is a known number, which is 71. So if I subtract 71 from the total of 220, that gives me 149 newtons. So that's the vertical part of my force on the right, the cable on the right. Um, then, knowing those components, since this angle right here is opposite of 149, we'll do inverse tan of 149 over 84. That gives us 61 degrees. And now, having that 61 degrees in either one of my legs, I can figure out the actual force. The actual force, so this is the hypotenuse. When you're looking for a hip, you will be dividing by sine and cosine. And if I take my opposite, which is 149, so then my force on the right is going to be 149 over sine of 61. And that will be the answer to my force in the right cable. Let me plug it in real quick. 149 divided by sine of 61. And that gets me 170 newtons. And that means that since this right here is 170 newtons, that means that this weight right here is 170 newtons. So that's the idea. That's how they figure out, depending upon what is weighing on the two ropes and what angles they make, the two weights that are thrown over the pulley provide the required tension in the ropes, thus supporting the leg of this poor person who probably broke it some doing some fun stuff, maybe playing football.
And that is the answer to your problem number 40.